welcome to the stage, Whirly, founder and CEO of Strangeworks. Thank you all for attending. Uh, my name is Worley. I'm the founder and CEO of Strangeworks, which is a quantum computing software company in Austin, Texas. And last year, at the same time, I was at the Dubai Future Forum, where I gave a talk called From Playgrounds to Particle Physics, in which I argued that the world is facing a lot of problems, and one of the biggest problems it faces is that there are not enough minds focused on science. So, to review, the problems I mentioned were things like the $8.2 trillion we're estimating will be lost due to pandemics over the next decade, or the million of species that are at risk of disappearing from the planet. Greenhouse gases, consuming of energy, and disease. All of these things are interrelated. And I thought about this for a long time, and what I came to was a conclusion that what we really need is we need more people involved in science. So let's put that into perspective. By the year 2040, there will be 8 billion people on the planet. If you took everyone that will be involved in science at that moment in time, that would end up being literally about 0.1% of the population. That is not a lot of people focused on the problems that are the most difficult problems, the most challenging problems, the most threatening problems to our species. So to put that into visual, if you think of your house key as all of science, and you tossed it onto the corner of a soccer pitch, your house key would be all of science, and the field would be the rest of humanity. So if you think about that as a visual, that doesn't really sound like we have enough people involved in science. Now, of course, at Strangeworks, we're working on quantum computing. And quantum computing is an absolutely necessary technology for solving some of the intractable problems that we face as a species. However, it's a very difficult technology. You can't just take a scientist and have them use a quantum computer or a developer and have them program it. But fortunately, we have artificial intelligence now in the mix. And these two technologies are symbiotic. We're talking about two technologies that both come from nature. We're talking about a technology that when combined, will create exponential change. Think about us trying to use the model of the brain from nature to solve problems. Think about us trying to take atoms and use them, the electrons, to compute on. This is revolutionary. And there's a lot of problems with these technologies. Um, research teams spend months and years working just to come up with a few things that they can run on these machines. A lot of people will tell you that the problem with these machines is that the cubic quality isn't high enough. It doesn't have the right fidelity. Some people will tell you that the entanglement times, the decoherence, don't work. They're not long enough to run some of the problems that we want to run. All of these things are truly factors, but I don't think they're the most important factor. I think that the most important factor is you. I think that the number one issue in quantum computing and getting this technology out into the world is that no one can easily use it. You can't go to a Global 2000 company and say, hey, here's access to all of the quantum computers and have them achieve much with it. If you need a physicist or a team of physicists and computer scientists to use a technology, you are limiting yourself to a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of that 0.1%. That's not a market. And we need dramatic exponential change in the world. So with that, I set out on a mission to create something we call conversational compute. Now, this is not having an AI simply write code for you. Because when you tokenize words, the word fast gets tokenized different than the word exponentially, gets tokenized different than the word quickly. We need a model. In the 60s, a gentleman by the name of Iverson worked on books and a programming language called APL, A Programming Language, literally one of the first. And the argument was that if you want to talk to a computer, you need to learn math. Well, we now have the technology that we can have the computers learn our natural language. And so when I talked about this last year, there were a lot of questions. And so this year, I wanted to come here to Abu Dhabi, and I wanted to actually demonstrate this system working in real time. And so if you'll bear with me, I'd love to give you a demonstration of that now.
Hello, Strangeworks. How are you doing today? Hi. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? How can I assist you today? What do you know about carbon capture? Carbon capture is a process to trap carbon dioxide, CO2, before it's released into the atmosphere, reducing greenhouse gases. It involves capturing CO2 from sources like power plants or directly from the air, transporting it underground in geological formations, or using it in various products. It's a key technology in the fight against climate change. Would you like to dive deeper into specific areas of carbon capture? Absolutely. What resources could you pull for me? Sure. Let me see what I can find on carbon capture. We have resources on point source capture, direct air capture, storage solutions, and economic integration. So Plus, there are research areas like novel sorbent materials, process efficiency optimization, and integration with renewable energy. Anything specific you'd like to explore first? So now we have taken a process that is usually days and weeks and live pooled resources from open collections in the Strangeworks network. And we've found that there's 78 white papers in this topic and 13 approaches. Why don't we take a look at some of those white papers? Can we take a look at some of those white papers, please? Here are five papers on carbon capture. One, modeling carbon capture on metal organic frame. I'm so sorry. Um, let's take a look at that third paper. The paper titled Awakening a Latent Carbon Fixation Cycle in Escherichia coli by Ari Satanowski et al., published in 2020, focuses on using constraint-based modeling and mixed integer linear programming to identify an active... Oh, I apologize again. Uh, I'm actually in Abu Dhabi. Could you summarize that paper in Arabic, please? بالتأكيد. تتناول هذه الدراسة استخدام النمذجة الاستنباطية والبرمجة الخبطية المختلفة لتحديد وتفعيل مسارات تثبيت الكربون في بكتيريا الأشريشية القولونية. تركز الورقة على دورة GED وأهميتها في فهم نشأة مسارات تثبيت الكربون كما تستعرض التطبيقات البيوتكنولوجية المحتملة لدورة GED ونورها الخطية. That's really interesting. Uh, what could I'm glad we do? you found it interesting. What could we do with the... Uh, oh, sorry. Can you suggest uh, how we could do an optimization around this? I keep hitting the wrong space. We bar. can optimize carbon fixation pathways in E. coli with this formulation. Objectives. Maximize thermodynamic driving force, MDF, for pathway feasibility. Two, minimize the number of reactions to reduce complexity. Zero, reaction selection. Binary choice for reactions active, inactive. Continuous levels controlling reaction flux. Constraints. One, thermodynamic feasibility. Pathways must have a positive MDF. Two, metabolic balance. Maintain balance for metabolites like ATP and NADH. Compartment constraint. All reactions occur in the cytoplasm. Enzyme capacity. Enzyme levels stay within biologically feasible ranges. This mixed integer, multi-objective model helps in tuning the carbon fixation pathways efficiently. Ready to give it a go. That'd be great. Can you uh, show me what solvers we could run this on? Here are some solvers suitable for our optimization. Toshiba SQBM Plus, simulated quantum bifurcation machine. I'm running a little Ideal short on time, so could you go ahead and run that on Toshiba and Gorobi for me? The optimization jobs for your problem are set up. We're running them on Toshiba SQBM Plus and Gorobi. You can monitor the status in the jobs view, and I'll let you know once they're complete. Stay tuned. So, in a few moments here on stage, we have found a topic, we have pooled research, code, and things available open source and archive, etc. We have taken and extracted data samples from those and built an optimization pathway. And then we have taken that and found the appropriate solvers we can run that particular math on and then deployed that math to the Strangeworks infrastructure, in this case, to Toshiba and Gorobi. So that is the future of computing, and that is the future of quantum. My mission is to make all of you sci curious, curious about science and involved. And I hope that today's demo will get you excited about using the Strangeworks platform and running your own optimizations explorations 
and any other ideas you have on what is going to be the most revolutionizing computing technology to affect our species. Thank you very much.